everyone, welcome to the start of decorating my Bergeret hat for my 18th century gown. Uh, I bought this off a seller off eBay and the link will be on my website where to purchase this hat. Uh, I'm going to start off on the inside by lining it. I'm going to do a pleated uh, liner. First of all you need to First of all you need to measure from that point there on the inside to the outside. Mine is about 13 centimetres or just over 12. Um, and next you need to measure around the whole brim of your hat to find out the circumference all the way around. The measurement around around the brim of the hat is one meter three. Next I want to cut out um, a piece of fabric but I want to um, double the length so I've cut out a really oh. okay so you can see here I've got a really long strip of fabric I've had to make a seam in the middle so I had to join two pieces and this is the 13 centimeters wide. Okay, we are starting out with the 2 centimeter wide pleats. carry on like this all the way to the end of the piece of fabric. Okay, to start putting the lining on, I'm going to choose a point where it's just starting to sit on the head, so I'm going to start from this point here. So go into the inside, place your fabric. Now I want to make sure all the time that this is parallel. You don't want it off at an angle like that. You need to keep it straight all the time. So, starting at the top, I'm just going to take the pin out and actually pin it to the hat. I'm going to do that all the way around. To take it out, put it back. Going through your hat. Okay, got right to the end now with the very last pleat and you want enough excess on both sides so that you can actually join those two pieces together and you're going to turn over a seam then turn it over again and then that will become your very last pleat. Okay, putting these pins into the straw hat is not the easiest of things. So I'm going to start where, where the opening is and I'm going to lay down a flat pleat and then just put a pin in there somewhere near the brim just to hold it. Then I'm going to the next pleat and you're tapering down so the bottom here where my fingers are will be, won't be as wide as the top. So just put a 
pin into your clip to hold it. Like so, we go on to the next one. Clip that down. Difficult to do is like so. Then go to the next pleat. Pleat is under and you're tapering down all the time. Towards the inside of your hat. You just put a pin there to hold it. And so on. You're going to do this all the way around. After setting the pleats in place with the pins, I've gone around and run a little cap stitch in place to anchor them in so I can take all the pins out around near the crown on the inside. Next I want to make a little filling piece to cover the inside there. So I've cut out a circle and you can see here I've run a little gathering stitch to just pull it in a little bit um, to help it settle into the crown there. I've now pulled my gathering stitch as you can see here it just gathered in a little tiny bit and then this will make it easier to fit inside and then I'm going to just catch stitch it to the liner I've now hand hacked and sewed in my liner for the cap it's not absolutely perfect because that was really hard to go through the straw hat <laughs> um, I highly recommend a thimble that absolutely killed my fingers but there you go that's that bit done and now I'm going to go on to the next part I've now sewn around some bias binding around the trim so it makes the edge look nice and neat and hide uh, the mess on the inside there um, my bias binding is 25 millimeters wide 2.5 centimeters and it's a nice lilac soft cotton bias binding. I've started out at the beginning here sewing the end down like so and you want to make sure that this edge lines up quite nicely with the brim of your hat right on the edge there so they both meet all the way around. I've managed to get this in the sewing machine but you do have to go quite slowly and carefully and it helps if you take the end arm off at the end of your sewing machine. So I've just finished off and gone all the way around and I've come to the end here. I'm just going to cut off the excess now of the overlapped bit. So we just finished sewing off that to meet um, the start of your bias so you're just going to sew that down and then we'll turn the whole bias over like so okay sorry for that shake right the next thing to do and um, I've almost finished it now but I just thought I'd show you the last part is remember you sewing your bias down now you need to pull this over making sure everything's flat, which it pretty much is. Um, and make sure that's pretty tight. And you want it to cover your row of stitch in there, so just pull it over and hold it. You have to do this a bit at a time, just make sure your other side's okay. Yep. And I'm doing little 
prick stitches with my needle where you just come up and you go down just a split millimeter beside it I'm making sure I'm coming up more or less on the straw and the edge of the bias then I'm going down making sure I'm sort of coming up just above the edge it's a little bit tricky sometimes I've come up on other places I don't want to I did try doing cat stitches but I found it just didn't work you could see all my little stitches so just holding that pretty tightly, making sure everything is flat. Just come up, go down a little bit beside where you've come up. Slip through, go down, come up. And you'll just see here, you can just got little tiny prick stitches all the way around. I've now come to the end of sewing my bias binding on. I've turned the end inward so it's nice and neat and just run some cap stitches along the bottom there and a few on the top just to hold it in place. So that's now all finished. And moving on to the next part. I've decided to start off with a lilac um, pleated trim with a frilly edge so I've done exactly the same here as what I did before on the pink trim on the inside here so I don't need to repeat that instruction because it's earlier on in the video and of course you'll need to just double check your measurements for your width as well I'm eventually going to put a cover on the crown so I'll want it to hide all the edging so I've made it just a little bit wider than it needs to be so it can be covered up. I've now hand tacked on my lilac cotton pleated trim and finished off on the side here. Uh, I start on the side because um, it hides the join line a bit better and we won't see a join at the front or the back. Next I've decided to uh, put this really nice pink lace trim over the top of it but instead of pleating this time I've decided to gather it so I've run here two lines of gathering thread now I already did a practice piece earlier so I knew how much to uh, cut out lengthwise and how wide I wanted it to be. I wanted it to actually overlap by a good two and a half centimetres or so around the whole bridge so I don't want it to actually finish off where the lilac is. I wanted it to come a bit further forward. I thought that looked quite pretty. So that's what I'm going to do there. next stage is uh, trying to make a cover for the top of the crown. I wasn't sure of the best way to do this so I just cut out a big square of fabric and uh, with mum helping she held it on while I pinned it in place. So I recommend having two people to help you with this unless you can find a better way to do it. Um, I've just gone round and tacked it in place with some stitches, being very, very careful. <laughs> um, can't count all the times that I've stabbed myself so far. <laughs> so I thought a rubber band might help putting it around some of the bottom pins to help hold it there a bit better. Um, 
now I've tacked it down, I'm going to remove the pins and see what it looks like. I've decided on making a pleated trim to go around my hat about sort of quarter way in from the front thereabouts um, so I pleated this exactly the same way as I pleated the trim on my sat gown if you want to refer to that they're basically just half inch pleats Okay, just whizzing along here, I've decided on doing this little ruched trim all around the crown of the hat. I finished it at about 3 centimetres wide, but I actually cut the trim 3.5 centimetres wide to start with. So by the time you've trimmed it down and cut it and gathered it in the middle, it should end up at about 3 centimetres. I actually had a little bit of trouble sewing it onto the back because I started off by, I don't know if you can see it, just whip stitching it onto the crown there so you wouldn't see any stitching. But I found it quite hard around the back, I could, my fingers couldn't take it anymore. So I've run a little bit of hot glue just on the back here to anchor that in. And that's where I finished up there. Next for my hat, I'm going to add some ostrich feathers. I bought these in white. I'm going to attempt to dye them a dusky pink. Okay, next I've mixed my pot of dye. I've used a beige and Dylon Flamingo Pink because I wanted to make it a bit more dusky pink brown and then a very tiny bit of black but only a little bit otherwise it turns purple so I found out so I've just boiled up some water and just dyeing my feather I'll leave it in at least five minutes so it takes the colour if you leave it in just a minute it goes very light and it doesn't really do a lot And this is the result of dyeing my feathers. Uh, one does seem a little bit better quality than the other one. This one's a bit wispy. Um, they do shrink a bit, so if you want your finished size, say at 10 inches, I recommend you buy a 12 inch long feather. Um, so they do shrink, so it's turned a nice dis uh, dusky plum colour. That will stand out on my hat. Now glued my feathers in place on the inside there and this is now the finished hat along with some lace that I've just sewn on the inside there to attach it to my head. The wig is by Lisa Fabio on her Etsy store called Little Penny Lane, which I will show in just a moment where the internet link is to her shop. I 
um, this is Lisa's uh, Etsy store. Just quickly showing the little choker that I made. It's just got a little hook and eye on the back of it. Uh, this is some of the makeup I used for my face. Uh, this is from another Etsy store I was uh, pointed in the direction of. Uh, it was very good. It's like a face paint, but without it looking too uh, fake, <laughs> if you get my meaning, like when you see it on clowns and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I've used some white powder and this rice powder. So that's basically the foundation that I used for the base of doing my face up. Try not to go too over the top or you'll end up looking really, really white. I find just a little bit of this goes quite a long way. And this is the Etsy store where I bought it from called Little Bit. 